Okay, then I'm going to try to show you quickly how to make the permanent magnet piston. i try to give you a good idea of how to make it. Um, basically what I use is a 7 8 inch magnet with a 3 16 inch inner diameter hole. This is a quarter inch, a 3 quarter inch magnet with a 1 quarter inch hole. Uh, you'll need three of these and one of these. Now these magnets, uh, they won't crush your bone, but they will break uh, your skin and cause you to bleed if you get pinched. So you do need to be very careful. Um, you also need some tubing. Uh, this tubing, I'll show you the, uh, part list, uh, the part list for that. And you need to also drill a 9 64th inch hole in it. And you need to super glue it into the magnet. What that allows it to do is to slide back and forth on the brass rod very, very smoothly. And you also need a small piece of a quarter inch outer diameter tubing, a one eighth inch inner diameter tubing, and you super glue that in there. And then you'll super glue the anchor magnet onto the brass rod in the correct position. Um, the tubing for the inner piston sleeve is 7 8 inch inner diameter, 1 inch outer diameter. You want to cut about a, a 10 inch piece of that and you can super glue one of the magnets in there after you do that. Uh, now the main body of the piston that's a very thin piece of uh, PVC sheet along with uh, a couple, three different types of uh, tubing. And there's actually a, a, a fourth diameter tubing on the bottom at, to act as a ring. So you can just pop it right on and off. So that's really just various diameters of tubing. The first one is one inch inner diameter, one and a half inch outer diameter. I'm going to have the parts list at the end. And so that's really all you need to make the permanent magnet piston. Uh, super glue, some tubing, and some magnets, and a brass rod. And I'm going to show you how to set the distance of the anchor magnet next. Okay, basically, what we see here is the top magnet is screwed and it's repelling from the anchor magnet and the bottom magnet's in there but it's not glued yet with super glue. Basically the distance between that, the distance between the bottom and the bottom magnet needs to be the exact same distance as these two. One in this configuration. So it's right around one and uh, three quarter inches. And so the distance between there and there needs to be one and three quarter inches. So the anchor magnet needs to be moved up some. Okay. If anything, you want to make it just barely longer, and then you can grind off the uh, the brass rod. So basically, we need to move the piston, the anchor magnet up slightly. Then we will super glue it in place, and then we will test it out. And when it's working, well, fully functioning, uh, perfectly working, and tuned magnet piston. That's the short version of it. Now here's the anchor magnet secured in the correct position. You can see I marked it with the marker to mark the correct position. And I super glued it and I had a little bit extra glue at the bottom because it's going to be pushing down with about 40 pounds of force right, right square center. So you need it to be secure. It's not uncommon for the piston magnets to get out of alignment after use. Of course when making these commercially we won't be using super glue. And here's the magnet piston I just made. You see it doesn't go all the way down. It's not capturing enough of the force. So I can shorten the brass rod at the bottom just a little bit to make it catch more force. I'd like to point out that it's not proportional. So you don't want to shorten it by that much. I just take a very small amount for it to be shortened. 
Now the permanent magnet piston is fine tuned. You can see how it just touches the anchor magnet. It's very easy to pull, and yet it's drawing the full force between the piston magnet and the trigger magnet. So it's very smooth. And again, all I did was I gradually I uh, set it so that the distance between here and here is the same between here and here. I went overshot a little bit, and then I just very gradually shorten this with the grinder until it is perfect again and again it's not comparable so I just shortened it a little bit and it just made it perfect so that's how you create the perfect permanent magnet engine so anybody can do this you can do this with different materials and when you do it you can use a push pull meter and you can prove for yourself every single thing and every claim I made.